Now, I have some exceedingly rare perfume flacons and a lot of them are empty, but I didn't really care because who cares when it looks like this? I mean, this is a masterpiece. This is when fragrances, this was launched in the 30s. It's called Naughty 90s. It was launched in the 30s. And it is, just shows you that, you know, flacons were masterpieces in those days. And it wasn't just about the fragrance being a masterpiece. It also reflected, um, it was reflected on the actual flacon. This is Max Factor. I mean, how cute is that? So, you know, if you if you want to go down this road, you're going to need a lot of money behind you. And maybe you do. Well, if you do, then great. Good for you. You can sling me a tenner. Um, <laughs> kidding. But, um, you know, if you've got a massive budget and you can afford, you know, tooling and to, you know, order at least 100,000 bottles, then, you know, you might want to look into a fairy cat for a bottle. But... What I want to talk to you, look at this. This is based off a Picasso painting. And this is just like, and I mean, the bottle, you know, the bottom of it, you'd be like, yeah, whatever, it's all right, it's blue, you know? But then you put that on and you're like, oh my God, it's gorgeous, isn't it? It's beautiful, I love it. And this could be another example. You know, if you have the budget, Go for bespoke, create a masterpiece in your flacon and don't just have it as the juice. But when you want to create your own fragrance, let's say, for instance, you love this one, Dearissimo. Now, if you love this fragrance and this is a vintage one and you probably almost guaranteed that today's Durissimo does not because of formula changes and regulations doesn't smell like this anymore. What you could do if you're lucky enough to actually still have some of the juice because perhaps you're like, do you know what? Everybody's copying Baccarat Rouge. Everybody's copying, you know, a copy of a Jo Malone fragrance or, you know, a Chanel, a Jador, whatever. Um, do it differently. Go down to the antique fairs, go to France to the Vive Granier, go online to Etsy and eBay and buy something that you fell in love with years and years ago that's now discontinued, but you can find the juice. Now, don't waste your money on buying an empty bottle because it's not going to work. A perfumer can't work off that. But what you can do, and this is a super little trick, you decant it, so all you need to do, now I'm lucky enough with this one, that it has a lid, and I can pour this, and what I would do is I would pour this, I would put it on my scales, I would zero my scales, and I would put at least five grams, to err on the side of caution, I would probably put five and a half to six grams of the juice of the actual liquid, okay? So it's not included in the container, just the liquid has to be at least five grams for a perfume house to now copy it. And then you might say, this is the fragrance what I want because this is a fragrance of yesteryear. But what I want you to do is put a little twist on it of something that reminded me of my, you know, pizza fest when I was in Italy. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So this is something that I want to show you that you can do something like this. Like for instance, this one. This is, the lid is actually missing, but I didn't care because look at all the juice that is left in that. And this is discontinued. This is a Ralph Lauren, and this is a vintage Ralph Lauren. And I've actually been lucky enough to find two of them. One of them was on the back of a scrap heap, like a, not a scrap heap, it was on the back of a man, on the back of a man. Yeah, because he was like a camel. Um, it was on the back of a truck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I sound like Del Boy. Um, it was on the back of a truck. And um, <laughs> it, was on the, it was on the back of this truck. And he was selling scrap. Basically, this man was selling scrap on the back of his truck. And on the front as well, because he was at a V Grandier. My husband called me and he went, Melly, I've just seen these two perfumes and this man over there. You know, go and have a look and tell me what you think. And I went, oh, yeah. Oh, I can't tell what it is. Anyway, I bought it. And then when I Googled it, it was the vintage Ralph Lauren. So, and this is an exquisite fragrance. It's 
knock your socks off sexy. It's gorgeous. And if I wanted to copy this, all I would have to do is give, like I just said, five, at least five grams of the perfume juice, send it to a perfume house and say, hey dude, can you copy this for me? Now, I don't like copying, I don't like duping fragrances um, because it doesn't show any originality. But because I've mentioned before, you're never going to get anything, very, very rarely are you going to get anything completely bespoke unless you hand over your own formula. Um, and even then they'll do it begrudgingly. Um, you're not going to get anything bespoke. So it's always going to be a modification of something that already exists. So why not give them something exquisite? like a vintage perfume that no one else will smell. And no one else has probably, you know, some people will have smelled it, of course, is the reason it was commercially successful. But don't copy it because there's no artistry in that. Put a spin on it, but be inspired by something. And when we talk about perfume briefs, you know, uh, people will say, get a vision board, get a whatever, you know, go and do a mind mapping or, um, you know, write a big long story, you know, that's 10 pages long. You know, you, a perfume brief can be 100 pages long or a perfume brief can, brief can be a single sentence, like the one used to create J'adore. And that sentence was, make me a fragrance that smells as sexy as a, well, not smells, <laughs> Make me a perfume as sexy as a stiletto, but as comfortable as a pair of Todd's. And now bear that phrase in mind and go and smell J'adore, especially the vintage ones. Go and smell it. It's incredible. And you are like, it is so sexy, but yet so comforting. And they nailed it with a sentence. So you can have a single sentence like that with your perfume brief. You might want to be a little bit more thorough. <laughs> because like I said, I've done really good perfume briefs. Um, but it could be that you say, well, I want this. But I want an, I want it to, I want an edge of um, a basil and lemon pizza with a dash of limoncello on the side in it so it would remind me of my time at the Amalfi Coast so think about that you might just be inspired by a place you might be inspired by a single scent it might be a single flower it might be a walk in the forest it might be the smell of a tree a leaf um, it might be the smell of someone's armpit um, how are you going to get that into a bottle I don't know but everything's possible. I once had a client that called, not a client, but a potential uh, PR company actually, and they said, can you make a fragrance that smells like Kentucky Fried Chicken, KFC? Um, I went, yeah, but I don't want to. <laughs> Apparently, they do have it already, and it's a suntan lotion, so you can lie on the beach and smell like KFC. What in the world? Anyway, so that's food for thought about your fragrance and when you're giving a brief to a perfumer, uh, be inspired, not just by the fragrances that are on the market at the moment, but ones from a very long time ago. And if you, oh, Chant d'Arome by Guerlain, look at this bottle. I mean, what a shame that this is broken, but this is such a rare piece and there's nothing in it, but it doesn't matter. Maybe it could be, and maybe you smell it and you'll say to the perfume house, you know what, I've got no juice in it to give you. I love this fragrance. Can you recreate this fragrance, the Chant d'Aron, but make it, put a little spin on it, um, you know, to make it smell a little bit like this, but I want it to smell like the old Chant d'Aron, but you know, as long as it just does still need to be within the regulations, as long as you're selling it, especially in, uh, the EU. Um, America have different regulations. They have the FDA. And here's a really fascinating fact. I think when I was doing some research on this a few years ago, when I was doing my skincare brand in Dubai, at that time, quite a few years ago, um, the European Union, the European, the EU cosmetics 
uh, guidelines, regulations, they basically, in the EU, banned over 1,200 ingredients in personal care and cosmetics. 1,200, they banned, prohibited. In the US, that number was 17. One seven, that was it. So whenever I buy personal care products, I always make sure, I always look at the label and I always make sure that it says produced, manufactured in the EU because they will be following their guidelines and not the um, FDA guidelines. So that's it, food for thought. Um, if you don't have the actual juice and you want something to be inspired, perhaps your favorite auntie wore it or perhaps a lover, um, you know, that slipped through your fingers all those years ago and you want to reminisce about him or her, then um, you can actually tell the perfume house, actually, it's this fragrance, I want it the vintage smell, and then put your own little twist on it. It's important to have a twist because you don't want people saying, oh my God, it just smells like every other perfume. When I go to the Juicy Free, I just gravitate towards Chanel or Jador, um, Dior, sorry, um, and I don't really go anywhere else. And I bought the uh, Paco Rabanne because it looked like a robot, and it's awful. It's like gagging. Um, but the bottle is really cute, uh, but the fragrance inside is awful. And that is a perfect example. Let me go and get it, I'll show you. It was 30% off on EasyJet and I was in the lounge at the airport and I had too much champagne and when I got on the plane, I was like, oh, give me the G3 magazine, I'll buy that. Because <laughs> it looked like a robot. It's cute, right? It's so cute. But this is a classic example of when they paid more attention to the packaging and spent far too much money on it than the fragrance that's inside it. Because at the end of the day, oh, <laughs> at the end of the day, your consumer is going to be spraying that on their skin or on their hair or on their clothes. They're going to be wearing that. They're not going to be wearing that okay so bear that in mind have something that makes people turn around and go oh my god what are you wearing oh that's exquisite oh have you ever run after a person in the street oh hi how i've done it in the dubai mall like emirati guys wearing their gorgeous you know crisp white candoras and i've gone running after them going what are you wearing it smells amazing, not underneath your candora, but what are you wearing? That fragrance is just divine. Um, so yes, that's that's it. That's all I've got to say uh, regarding that. Um, just uh, pay attention to the fragrance and you can have a very simple flack on. Um, but if the fragrance is flabbergasting, then that is is what your consumers are going to remember. Okay, so I'll see you in the next vid. <laughs> Video, God, I'm not like a teenager anymore. <laughs>